My name is Damon Cortese, and I'm a developer advocate on the EMR team. And today I want to talk to you about customizable runtime images for EMR on EKS. So let's dive in. EMR on EKS is a way for you to be able to run your Apache Spark jobs using EMR and uh, pre-built container images on EKS. So one of the first things that we heard from customers when we released this functionality was they wanted the ability to customize those container images. So whether it was different dependencies, whether it was you know changing some environment variables or something like that, they wanted a way to be able to take the base image that we provided and make some modifications on top of it. So what we've done is we've allowed for a way to create self-contained immutable container images as part of your CI process to simplify application development. It's based on the EMR Spark runtime. You can add your own dependencies. It's incorporated with your CI pipeline. You can do things like automatic scans. You can you know, use these for testing. So uh, really nice to be able to have these images that you can use as part of your development process. How do you use it? One, you need to download the base image from the Amazon Elastic Container Registry, ECR. Two, you need to go ahead and just customize uh, and install your dependencies with the Docker file. So you just uh, use that base image and say, I want to add these pieces of software or tweak these settings or what have you. And then you want to build the image and push to a container registry. And this can be ECR, it could be GitHub Container Registry, it could be Docker Hub, wherever you want to push this to. And then you just run your Spark job with the custom image. That's it. So. How do we actually do this? One, create your Docker file with the EMR provided base image. You can see up at the top, I've got my from statement and then my EMR base image, including the account ID and region and the EMR release. In this case, I'm using EMR 6.3.0. You switch to the root user. That is what you're going to use to do all your customization. So you can install operating system software like Java 11. You can set environment variables. You can install Python libraries, whatever you want to be able to do on that container image, you can do as part of that Docker file. So then you switch back to the Hadoop user and you're ready to go. So number two, you build that uh, Docker file and push it to a container registry. So you just do a Docker build with the tag that you want, and then you tag it uh, for the container registry. In this case, I'm using the GitHub container registry, and then you can push it to that container registry and you're good to go. Then finally, run your job. Just use the EMR container start job run command. You provide your virtual cluster ID, your uh, role that you want to be able to run the job as. And then one thing to call out, you need to use the same release label in this command that you used in your Docker file. And then finally, down in the Spark submit parameters, you specify Spark Kubernetes container image and you point to your image location. If you have a private image, you can also um, specify image pull secrets. And that would be a Kubernetes secret that I can pull the the, um, credentials for that it needs to pull that image in case you have something sensitive you don't want to publicize your image. So that's pretty much it. Let's actually do a quick demo and see how this works for a real world use case. So let me switch over to my code real quick and scroll back up to the top. So um, we are approaching fire season here on the West Coast. And last year, uh, I was pretty much glued to any of the air quality sites that uh, are out there, as were millions and millions of other people. And those sites inevitably slowed down and became difficult to load. So I was curious, could I build my own air quality map of um, air quality data, PM 2.5 data, in the continental US? And to do that, I'm going to use Boca. Boca is a Python data visualization library. I've been hearing a lot about it lately, and while we include some libraries on EMR and EKS like Seaborn and Plotly, we don't include Boca. So I want to go ahead and install Boca on a custom image. I want to add some data to that image that I can use to map my air quality data to US counties. And then I also need to install a few dependencies for Boca. So let's see what that actually looks like. We're going to go ahead and download the EMR image. So in this case, I'm going to use the US East 2 region. And one thing to call out is the account IDs per region are different. And in the documentation, we've got a list of the different uh, regions and account IDs and um, how those all map. So I'm gonna log in to ECR. That's pretty straightforward. We just do an ECR get login password and then pass that to Docker login. So I'm good to go there. And then I'll do a Docker pull of the EMR image. And that will go down, pull the image. Uh, in most cases, it'll pull down, uh, you know, a few uh, couple gigs of uh, images. Um, but in this case, I've already pulled down that image. It's just verifying that it's up to date. So then we can build our Docker file. So I've got a Docker file here. And up top, you can see I'm just doing a from, and there is the image um, that I'm going to base this off of. I switch to the root user, and then I start my customization. For uh, my Boca stuff, I'm actually going to install Chrome, which is a little bit hilarious, uh, running Chrome on uh, EMR on EKS. But uh, it's 
completely possible in this situation. So I'm going to go ahead and download Chrome because Boca uses the Selenium library, which uses Chrome under the hood to take a screenshot and export that to a PNG. I'm going to upgrade my pip uh, installation, and then I'll do a pip3 install of the different libraries that I need. In this case, I'm specifying uh, my Boca library, Boto3 so I can upload to S3, um, Selenium and Chrome driver so I can take those screenshots. And then I'm also installing GeoPandas because what I want to do is I need to be able to do some geospatial queries. I'm doing a point and polygon intersection. And so I'm installing GeoPandas so I can do that as well. Part of that is I'm also going to download census data and package this into the container image so I don't need to access um, census.gov uh, during the course of the job. So I'm going to go ahead and download these zip files and also place them in a place that's locally accessible on the container. And then finally, I'm going to copy over a test script and then I'll switch back to the Hadoop user. So once I have this Docker file in place, I can go ahead and build it. So I can do um, just a Docker build and that'll you know, package this all together and build me a container image. I've already built this, of course. Um, so it's just gonna download the zip files just to make sure that they are up to date. But then all the other steps are going to be cached. So the pip3 install, um, the you know Chrome install, all that's going to be cached. So this will go pretty quickly um, once those files are downloaded and verified. So once we've done the Docker build, um, I want to test this, right? And so I've got this genplot.py file. And in there, I copy that over to the container image. And I just do a quick validation that Boca is working as expected. So I import a bunch of Boca stuff. And then I create a very basic plot and export that to a PNG file. And then I just verify the SHA-256 sum of the plot file. If it's good, I print out all good. So my image is built. Let me do a quick Docker run of that test file. And if I get the all good image, then I know that Boca is installed successfully and I've been able to generate a PNG file. And we can already see we just got the all good message. So now we can actually push this image to production and begin to use it in our jobs. So I'm going to push it to a private GitHub repo. In this case, uh, I've got my own personal repo. That's Decort. And I'm just going to do, I'm going to do a login to Decort. So I'm using a GitHub personal access token to log in there. I'm going to tag my Boca image with uh, my GitHub container registry. And then uh, if, if this was normal, I would do a Docker push. I already did this though, and that can take a while sometimes. So I'm going to leave that step out. And then I will um, also create a secret. So you might have things in your image that are sensitive. You might not want these images to be public. If you do, you can create a Kubernetes secret that can be used in your EMR and EKS job to pull the image using those credentials. So this is how you would do it. You just um, you know echo your GitHub username and access token base64 it and build up this YAML file that creates a secret in Kubernetes. Uh, the one thing to call out here, just make sure that you use the same namespace that you're running your EMR on EKS jobs on. So I've already gone ahead and um, done a cube control create of this secret. So I've got my uh, container that's pushed up to GitHub. I've got my secret that is in my EKS cluster. And now I can go ahead and run my EKS job, my EMR and EKS job. So I'll go over here and I'll do an e AWS EMR containers start job run. So I'll go ahead and start that. And then a couple things I want to call out here. One, I've got my release label. That's got to be the same release label that's in the Docker file. Two, I'm going to specify Spark Kubernetes container image, and that's my GitHub container registry decort EMR630 Boca. And then I'm also going to specify my image pull secrets here. So this is the uh, Kubernetes secret that I created earlier, and that'll be used to pull that container image from GitHub. So that went ahead and started up. Let me just uh, see if we can look at this job and kind of see what's going on. So I'll do a cube control logs of my Spark driver in the EMR jobs namespace. And what I should see, I should see that job um, popping up and running. And so what that's actually doing, um, the air quality data that I'm using, let me show that really quickly. So I went to the registry of open data and I searched for air quality. And we've got this open AQ data set. And this is a pretty awesome data set. It's air quality data from public data sources. And it's aggregated across the world. And it's updated every half hour. So I'm going to do a quick list of that just so you can see what that looks like. And um, that job is already done. So <laughs> we'll take a quick look at that in a sec. But um, what I'm going to do, I'll list that open AQ fetches bucket. And in there, there's going to be a bunch of different data. So we've got this real-time gzipped data, and that's what I'm kind of curious about. And let's do it for 2021-06-16. So if we look at that specific date, 
What we'll see is that there are a number of gzipped JSON files that are updated every so often, and that has a PM, uh, actually a bunch of different readings, including PM 2.5, PM 10, uh, ozone readings. And so I've got um, a script here that goes through and just kind of uh, parses that data, joins it with the census county boundary data, and then draws us a map. And so I installed you know, Boca and GeoPandas using my custom uh, image. And then I ran this job over that data. So let's see if we actually have some data that came out of that. So I'll go back to my code here and I've got a, uh, I output this PNG in my S3 bucket in the output folder, and I've got this 0616 file here. So let me go ahead and copy this file locally. And then I'm going to go ahead and open this uh, 0616 file. And what we can see is that uh, we've got our US PM 2.5 by county for uh, June 16th. So we can kind of see on a county by county basis uh, where there might be high readings of PM 2.5. So now I can actually kind of keep this up to date on an hourly basis. I can see what's going on. Um, I aggregated this by county, but you could of course aggregate it differently if you wanted to. So um, this PNG here was created on EMR and EKS with the Boca library, with uh, Selenium, with Chrome for the, the screenshot. So there are a lot of additional dependencies that I was able to package into my container image. So um, I hope that's helpful. Let me uh, just paste in a few couple resources here. So um, there are some resources. Let's go back here. Um, so next steps, take a look at the documentation. That'll give you some ideas in terms of how to run these images and different ways to, to build them. We have an EMR and EKS workshop that is really useful and helps uh, walk you through different tutorials and use cases. And then finally, we've got this awesome EMR and EKS best practices guide that shows you how to do different things in EMR and EKS. And so um, please check that out. And I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, reach out to me. I'm at Decor on Twitter. I hope you have a good day.